A bar of steel has an endurance limit of 40 KSI, a yield strength of 60 KSI, and an ultimate strength of 80 KSI. The bar is subjected to a steady torsional stress of 15 KSI and an alternating bending stress of 25 KSI. What is the factor of safety against fatigue failure using the Goodman criterion, the Gerber criterion, and the Morrow criterion? This is the first example for the fatigue failure criteria main video, link below. Since we have already solved many other problems where we find the endurance limit using the SE prime estimate and the Marin factors, we're not going to find the endurance limit. We assume it's already been found. And since we've also solved many problems where we calculate the maximum stresses based on the given loads, even using fatigue stress concentration factors, we'll assume we've already calculated those torsional stresses and bending stresses. If you want to check all the examples related to that, the links are in the description of this video. Here we are tasked with calculating the factor of safety using three different fatigue failure criteria. From the fluctuating stress diagrams, we know that the alternating stresses are paired with the endurance limit, and the mean stresses are paired with the static properties such as the yield strength, ultimate strength, or true fracture strength. A steady torsional stress indicates that the torsional stress is always that value, meaning that the mean stress is 15 KSI and the torsional alternating stress is zero. The alternating bending stress indicates that the normal stress goes from minus 25 to positive 25 KSI. This means that the mean normal stress is zero. The most common way to come up with the overall alternating and the overall mean stress that we need for our factor of safety expressions is by finding the von Mises stress for alternating and mean values. We need to do this because we have both a torsional and a bending stress that will result in some principal stresses. We cannot, for example, compare a torsional mean stress of 15 KSI to the ultimate strength of the material in the Goodman equation for the factor of safety. Instead of the mean torsional stress, we have to compare the von Mises stress that results from the principal stresses that that torsional stress causes. We will later learn that the von Mises stress for a stress element that is subjected to one normal stress and one torsional stress is always equal to this expression. A link to that video is in the description below. So going back to our current stress state, the minimum von Mises stress will occur when the alternating normal stress is zero and the maximum von Mises stress will occur when the normal stress is either maximum or minimum at 25 or minus 25. This is a mistake many textbooks make, so pay close attention and I'll elaborate at the end of this video. The mean von Mises stress is therefore the average and the alternating von Mises stress is the distance from either the minimum or the maximum stress to the mean stress. In other words, the von Mises stress will reach a minimum value when the normal stress is zero and it will reach a maximum value when the normal stress is maximum at 25 or minus 25, which confirms that our mean and alternating values for the von Mises stress are correct. At this point, we have almost everything we need. For the Morrow criterion, we need to know the true fracture strength. Looking up this property is not always easy, so a reasonable estimate is often used. If using KSI, the true fracture strength is 50 more than the ultimate strength, and if using megapascals, the true fracture strength is 345 more than the ultimate strength. Substituting the values in our expressions, we find that the Goodman factor of safety is 1.95, 2.2 for Gerber, and 2.75 for Morrow. To elaborate on the textbook mistake I mentioned before, you'll often find expressions for a mean and alternating von Mises stress. These are not correct. For example, for the alternating von Mises stress, we would be using a torsional alternating stress of zero, since the torsional stress is constant. After having carried out the whole process, we clearly see that the amplitude of the von Mises stress is not 2 times 25. According to the other equation, the mean von Mises stress would be 26. In a more intuitive manner, we see that these equations yield an incorrect answer because at no point during the operation of my part, the lowest von Mises stress is equal to 1 KSI. The lowest stress state occurs when the normal stress is zero, and even then there is a torsional stress of 15 KSI, which would of course not yield a von Mises stress of 1 KSI. Therefore, my recommendation is to always find the maximum and the minimum von Mises stress first, and find the mean and alternating von Mises stresses from there. 
For one more example on fatigue failure criteria, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.